Today we're going to look at something that's unusual to find, at least in the United States. This is an SA 9102T00. You know what that is? That is from Belgium by Philips. It is a Sierra cassette recorder. And this was, as near as I can tell, I know we say that a lot, but brand new in the box. Even though it was from 1965. So it's uh, almost, what, 48 years old? Comes with an unopened patch cord. I took the tape off. That's an unopened microphone for the style this uses. And here's the recorder itself. I mean, spanking new. Also in the box. an unopened, unused, compact cassette. Seems to be a generic brand. No real name on it. And A little holder stand for cassettes. So as near as I can tell, Sierra was a Belgium brand of Philips. And I have seen, of course, my Mercury that looks exactly like this. But I've also seen a photograph of an Elizabethan, which is from Great Britain, I think. And the picture I saw of it has the exact same box and contents and everything. Just different logos here and in here. And wouldn't surprise me if there's others. Maybe a Stella, which is also Europe. If this looks familiar to anybody who's watched my videos over time, you'll notice it is a, another version of my Mercury cassette, the TR-8000 which is uh, also a Philips EL3301. This particular one was made in 1966 and the Sierra is from uh, 1965. The Sierra is a little different. It has a little uh, all transistor notation here. But other than that, it's just about the same. I'm not going to plug the microphone in. I'm going to leave that all tight in its little wrapped up kit. I used an extra microphone to uh, make the recording you'll hear. And by the way, although this is very pretty, uh, being very new, it, it's not the best operating machine. It uh, has low volume and on recording, particularly low volume with the microphone that is. But of course when I got it I had to do the mandatory Phillips belt change and I took the opportunity to make some video of that so we can see the insides. Well, the Sierra is going to need a belt change even though it's really brand new and has been apparently sitting unopened in its box since the 50th week of 1965 looks like it was made in Austria I notice it has no motor control board
couple hours later. Lots of gunk. Looks like we might have a success. Alright, that's promising. Let's put it back in the plastic case. Alright, let's take a look at the instructions. Lots of different languages there. Five. Repeated five times. Everything. All right, here's the uh, interesting page here. Of the, uh, you start with the connecting strap here, which is the EL3768 stroke zero zero, which is the one they supply, which has a uh, three pin and a five pin. Then depending on what source you want to record from and where you're at are the various attachments you would need. Um, I'm not quite sure what all of this means. But the standard one that we get with the Norelcos is this one. The 376805. So this is what I ended up using. I couldn't quite make out what all the different connections were for. Although sometime I am going to look at that again. So there's our technical data. Frequency range 100 to 7,000. Wow and flutter. Less than 1% peak to peak. Uh, that's where I'm looking. All right, to demonstrate recording I made, I'm going to use a period appropriate Mercury cassette, which I've had, that it's about the right era, I think. And I made the recordings with uh, a microphone, from another Mercury microphone. I didn't want to take this one out of the package. And then I used the standard um, Philips and Norelco patch cord, not the one that it came with. So I'm not quite sure what to hook that up to. Uh, you'll hear my extremely low volume that I got with the microphone. Although hooking it up with the music is not quite as bad. We're going to be all the way on 9 here. All right, now for an example of the uh, music that I had on the patch cord. It's better. But in neither time using the microphone or the patch cord did I get any significant meter deflection. Very little. Never went to the red and never even went to the right side of the black. Once again, we're all the way at nine. From the Commons in Columbus, Indiana, here.
recording made in 1980. That's a little bit of the better but still low audio from the Sierra. There's probably some uh, bad capacitors or resistors that are out of tolerance that were I ever inclined to, I should go in and diagnose and change. But I don't know how much I want to disrupt this nice original machine here. I might just leave it well enough alone. So that's the Sierra cassette recorder, a Philips EL3301 from 1965. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Bye.